Assalamu alaikum. All praise is due to Allah for coming to the black man and woman in the wilderness of North America in the person of Master Farid Muhammad. We thank him for raising in our midst his promised Messiah, the exalted Christ, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. We can never thank them both enough for their love and their mercy in our midst in giving us a real live human being who is the true and prime example of man's potential to become God. We thank them for the perfected representative of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. He is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Welcome to Self-Improvement. Assalamu alaikum. The basis for community development. We are broadcasting on NOI.org because this course designed on the guidance of Allah and given to us through the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is available to all who desire to reach his or her own potential, which is to become a God. We are witnessing and experiencing Allah bringing about the end of Satan's world and bringing in a new reality. Therefore, each of us must undergo a personal transformation. The word transformation means a complete change. This course, Self-Improvement, the Basis for Community Development, consists of 21 study guides in three volumes, with the 22nd study guide to be published in a few weeks. Be sure that you have your own set of study guides. Go to store.finalcall.com. And I cannot repeat this enough, now more than ever, no one should be without the digital edition of the Final Call newspaper. Subscribe at finalcalldigital.com. So beloved, right now we are in the middle of what the Holy Quran calls a calamity. A calamity is a disastrous event marked by great loss and lasting distress. A calamity is also a state of mind of deep distress or misery. Now, the United States is in the grip of a devastating economic crisis that is linked to the coronavirus. It is a time when capitalism has been put on pause. In study guide number 12, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us that there are four great impediments to self-development, racism, sexism, materialism, and nationalism. What we are finding now is that Allah has imposed a pause in a capitalist system where the focus is on material acquisition and material gain. We are all being confined uh, to our homes and we only come out either to get some air or to purchase what are known as essentials such as food and water. This is allowing us to come out from under the hypnotic spell of material acquisition. And we may find that there is more joy in getting to know the people in our household than there is in buying a pair of shoes or a brand new car. It is no accident that we just completed on Friday, the 13th of March, study guide number 14, which was entitled or is entitled Respect for Authority. That study guide, our uh, review of it ended just before the onslaught of all of the consequences of the presence of the uh, coronavirus. So understanding the importance of respect for authority and why we must obey those in authority over us 
except that it conflicts with our religion, has never been more critical than now. So if you actively engaged in Study Guide 14 and came out to the study group in the weeks just before and after Savior's Day, you actually prepared your mind and spirit for the trials of confinement. Even as we make sure that we have sufficient supplies to sustain the physical self, even though we need to make sure we have food, we have water, we have adequate uh, shelter, we also must, and even more importantly must, have a tight, unbreakable connection to the true supplier of all things. Just a quick reference back to respect for authority uh, before we start tonight on uh, the second uh, phase of Study Guide 15. Um, in our movement and our access to goods and services, as I mentioned, millions and millions of us have been even further restricted since last week. We need to recall why it is important to comply with instructions. Minister Farrakhan teaches us that people are more willing to obey a law if they understand the reason for the law. In all that the minister has given us, he always gives us the reason behind all of God's laws because the human being is a creature of reason. The minister explained to us, and it's worth reviewing, his letter introducing Study Guide 14, he actually calls that study guide very important. All of the study guides are important. Why does he call that very important? He explains it. He said, because Study Guide 14 Respect for authority lays the base for peace. Peace where? In the home, in the mosque, in the church, in society, or wherever we are confronted with a relationship with authority. So now, beloved, study guide 15. Beautifully entitled, The Characteristic of Humility. We should instantly see the connection between respect for authority and the characteristic of humility. And do not think, beloved, that in Study Guide 14, the minister was only giving guidance to those under authority. The larger message is to those who are exercising authority by Allah's permission. He stated, Allah permits those in authority to exercise authority for a reason and a season, because only Allah is the author of all existence. Study Guide 15, which we will go into this evening, this is March the 27th, is extremely comforting. It's also enlightening. Last week, on the 20th of March, our assignment was to review specific verses in the Holy Quran and Bible, as well as the glossary. Some of these chapters and verses which the minister personally selected back in 1990 are custom made for this moment in time. So I just want to review the three Holy Quran references, and then I will leave you so that you can go into tonight's study and discussion. And I pray that you have people or a person in your household that you can share and exchange thoughts with. Allah, in our assigned verses from last week, is speaking to us directly, of course, the Holy Quran is the revelation of Allah to Muhammad ibn Abdullah. And so the Holy Quran, unlike the Bible, is not in third person. It is Allah, God, the Lord of the worlds, directly speaking to the reader. And here he is telling us the one thing 
that will keep us mentally and emotionally stable during this time. And that is, he controls everything. He is the possessor of power over all things. He has provided for the believer. He actually notes in these verses that he has given us places of abode and the things that we need. Most significant is his declaration that the work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad the work of his national representative, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, have already brought about the transformation that we are experiencing the joy of right now. We are actually, as a result of the presence of God, his coming here in 1930 and making himself known. He had been in and out of the country for 20 years. But on July 4th, 1930, he made himself known. And he interacted, he taught the Honorable Elijah Muhammad supreme wisdom for three and one half years before he departed. And over these last 90 years, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and now his student, his representative, his perfected representative, have worked tirelessly and have actually raised black people up out of the people that we were when Master Fadid Muhammad found us. We still have a way to go. And if we view what is going on now in this calamity correctly, we may come to the realization that this is actually a blessing for us because it is our final preparation to be saved, to be qualified for the salvation that Allah in his love and mercy for us is bestowing upon us. When we come through this, Allah willing, we will actually be more qualified to be redeemers of our people. And by the way, beloved, did you think about the way Allah allowed us, speaking of favor, he allowed us to experience just before this the most awesome Savior's Day ever. And for us to get in and out of Detroit, to enjoy one another before we were forced to have uh, what they call social distance and to go home. We were there hugging and feasting and enjoying one another's company. We celebrated our achievements, the 40th anniversary of the Final Call newspaper, which was founded and is published by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, a newspaper that in its evolution actually tells us the story of what the coming of God to America has done for the black man and woman. We were able to lay the base for the next phase of the Muslim program, which is to separate from Satan and his world. And above all, we were able to bask in the sunlight of a light-giving sun in the physical presence and the message that we received from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. You could say we dodged a bullet, or you could just say Allah got us. And so please go back when you have a moment and read or reread these scriptural references that are made in the Holy Quran and I do want to share with you myself, because sometimes people say to me, you know, Sister Ava, I read the Quran and the words are very nice and they're very lovely, but I don't really get out of it what I see Minister Farrakhan and others uh, get from it. You know, what you have to do, beloved, is come to the understanding 
that Allah is present now. He's not a spook or a spirit. He's a man. And these verses, though the language, because it is so elevated, may be different from what we are accustomed to hearing in the hells of North America, it is still talking to you and me. And so I do uh, want to read this uh, section because this is the one that I told you confirms the work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And this is uh, Surah 25 or Chapter 25, The Discrimination, El Furqan. That is no coincidence that it bears that name. And Section 6 is entitled by the translator, The Transformation Wrought, meaning it has taken place. It is in existence. It is brought about. Verses 61 through, I think this goes to 77, and then I'm done. Blessed is he who made the stars in the heavens and made therein a sun and moon giving light. And he it is who made the night and the day to follow each other for him who desires to be mindful or desires to be thankful. And the servants of the beneficent are they who walk on the earth in humility. And when the ignorant address them, they say peace. And they who pass the night prostrating themselves before their Lord and standing, and they who say, Our Lord, avert us from the chastisement of hell. Surely the chastisement thereof is a lasting evil. It is surely an evil abode and resting place. And who, when they spend, are neither extravagant or parsimonious. And the just mean is ever between these. And they who call upon not another God with Allah, and slay not the soul which Allah has forbidden, except in the cause of justice, nor commit fornication. And he who does this shall meet a requital of sin. The chastisement will be doubled to him on the day of resurrection, and he will abide therein in abasement. Accept him who repents and believes and does good deeds. For such, Allah changes their evil deeds to good ones, and Allah is ever forgiving and merciful. And whoever repents and does good, he turns to Allah a goodly turning. And they who witness no falsehood, and when they pass by what is vain, they pass by nobly. And they who when reminded of the messengers of their Lord, fall not down thereat deaf and blind. And they who say, Our Lord, grant us in our wives and our offspring the joy of our eyes and make us leaders for those who guard against evil. These are rewarded with high places because they are patient and they are met therein with greetings and salutation. Say, my Lord would not care for you were it not for your prayer. Now you indeed have rejected, so the punishment will come. And in the footnotes, the translator writes, here we are plainly told the transformation has already been wrought, the vices the people were indulged in had been changed to good and righteous deeds. And those who had once found pleasure in evil now find pleasure in the doing of good. It was the soul force of the prophet that brought about this miraculous transformation. Well, we know that is not referring any longer in time to the transformation of Arabia. That is referring to a people just out of slavery and in the throes of lynching who were engaging 
in deeds of unrighteous conduct after being under the rule of Satan for 400 years. And it was the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad that lifted up the black man and woman so that we might be qualified to be saved. We thank Allah and his messenger for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan because had he not been guided and touched by Allah, remember the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to Minister Farrakhan, Allah made you for me. Allah made you for me. And had he not brought back the nation of Islam, the reputation of the Christ, which had been shattered by hypocrites and devils, had he not brought us back to life, we would not be here to taste the fruits of our delivery and our salvation. So when you do your study tonight, you are to read the introduction and then read the first four paragraphs of the section called Analysis, which will help us be able to uh, do more in-depth thought on the question that we took on last week. And that question was, question number one, how does one get a true perspective on oneself? So may Allah bless us all with a wonderful study and keep us safe. Assalamu alaikum.